These NBA teams became surprisingly good, and everybody thought their success would last, until they sunk into mediocrity faster than they came up. Here are the greatest one-season wonder teams in NBA history. 1994 Nuggets Just like the mullet haircut, Mr. T, or the Betamax recorder, the Denver Nuggets were extremely popular and successful in the 80s. Just the 80s. From 1981 to 1990, the Nuggets made the playoffs. Their teams featured all-stars like Alex English, Kiki Vandeweghe, and Fat Lever. However, at the turn of the decade, things went south. For three consecutive years, the Nuggets failed to reach the postseason. Then in 1994, Denver finally managed to sneak into the playoffs as the eighth seed. They were heavy underdogs against the first-seeded Supersonics, and nobody gave them much chance, especially after losing the first two games in Seattle. But then, a miracle. Dikembe Mutombo and Mahmoud Abdul Rauf led the Nuggets to win the next three games and advance to the second round. It was the biggest upset in NBA history, and the first time an eighth seeded team defeated the best team in the conference. The Nuggets narrowly lost in the second round, but it seemed like they had laid the foundation for a perennial playoff team. The dream fizzled out quickly. Come the 1995 playoffs, and they lost in the first round. But the kicker, they they also lost to Kembe Matumbo over a contract dispute and didn't make the playoffs for the next eight seasons. 2019 Raptors In chess, sometimes you have to sacrifice a knight to capture the queen, the most versatile piece on the chessboard. DeMar DeRozan was a five-time All-Star who got repeatedly destroyed by LeBron James in the playoffs, and Toronto's GM Masai Ujiri knew he needed to make a change. He sacrificed an All-Star to get a superstar. It was Kawhi, a fun guy and the most dangerous queen on the chessboard of the Eastern Conference. The Raptors also got a rookie coach in Nick Nurse, added Marc Gasol, and invented Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet. It seemed like Ujiri sacrificed too much when the Raptors lost the first playoff game to a seventh seed Orlando until Toronto got serious and got past the magic. The hype was building, but their true test came in the second round against the stacked Sixers team. After six games, the series was tied, and the score was even in the deciding Game 7, with four seconds left on the shot clock. Kawhi dribbled the ball, took a shot, and after four bounces, it was instantly one of the most memorable game winners in NBA history. In the conference finals, it seemed like the Raptors were doomed again after Milwaukee won the first two games. But then, the Raptors followed Donald Trump's advice and built a wall to stop an immigrant. The Greek freak, the league MVP, couldn't get past the wall of Toronto's players, who sealed up the paint. The Raptors won the next four games and got to their first NBA finals. Toronto was the underdog against the Warriors dynasty and their death lineup. But after KD went down in Game 5 and Clay got injured in Game 6, Six, there was no stop in Toronto. Kawhi was the finals MVP, and Ujiri's big bet is on a winning horse. Too bad a few weeks later, Leonard decided that Canada was a bit too cold for his liking, and just like Biggie Smalls, he was going back to Cali. The Raptors and Kawhi danced only for one summer, but it was the warmest summer in Toronto's history. 1975 Warriors Rick Barry is a Warriors legend, but he is mostly known for his granny-style free throws. After they lost the 1967 NBA Finals, Barry's Warriors were unsuccessful for the next eight eight years. The team didn't even make the playoffs in 1974, and after all-star big man Nate Thurman left the team, nobody expected much in 75. But Jamal Wilkes injected fresh blood into the system, won Rookie of the Year, and the Warriors somehow secured the number one seed. Against all odds, Golden State reached another NBA Finals. Wes Unseld and the Bullets proved to be worthy adversaries, and all games in the Finals were extremely close. But the Warriors secured the win in all four games, with a spectacular performance from Rick Barry. Rick averaged 30 points per game and shot 94% from the free throw line with his weird underhand style. After their maiden title, Barry got older. The Warriors weren't competitive for years, and it took them 40 years to reach another NBA Finals. 1977 Blazers In 1970, the Portland Trail Blazers joined the NBA, and for the first six years, they sucked. Portland never had a winning record. They never even came close to the playoffs. Then in 1977, everything changed. Bill Walton, the first overall pick from 1974, finally got got healthy. Jack Ramsey became the head coach, and the Blazers qualified for the playoffs. Once the postseason started, Walton reminded everybody why he was one of the most dominant players in NCAA history. He and the Blazers swept mighty Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and the Lakers in the conference finals. However, in the finals, things started looking really bleak for Portland. Led by high-flying Dr. Che, the Philadelphia 76ers took a 2-0 lead, and it seemed like they would take a stroll to the title. But in Game 3, Walton dominated with 20 points. 
18 rebounds, 9 assists, 2 steals, and 4 blocks. It was a masterpiece of old-school basketball, and it turned the series around. Walton could not be stopped in the paint. He averaged 19 rebounds per game, and the Blazers won the next 4 games and the championship. Walton won the regular season MVP in 1978, but he was quickly cursed with enormous injury problems year after year. The Blazers traded him away, and it took them 6 years with a complete overhaul to win another playoff series. 2011 Mavericks Dirk was getting old, Jason Terry was even older, and Jason Kidd was a dinosaur. The Mavs made the playoffs every year since 2001, including the finals in 2006. But every year, they would lose in the playoffs, and nobody expected anything different in 2011. Like Charles Barkley loves to say, you can't win a title with the old geezers. But then, the Mavs swept Kobe and the Lakers. In the conference finals, Dirk manhandled the young OKC with Durant, Westbrook, and Harden. In the finals, it seemed like LeBron, Wade, and Bosh were too much for Dallas after they took a 2-1 series lead. But Dirk and the old geezers had different plans. Nowitzki pulled the Mavs from behind to win Game 4, and then spectacularly closed out the series with his unguardable one-legged fadeaway and robotic precision from the free throw line. But after that spectacular and unexpected run, the Mavs fell apart. It's been 11 years since their title, and they still haven't won another playoff series. 2015 Hawks Between 2007 and 2017, the Atlanta Hawks were like the McDonald's fast food chain. They were reliable. They made the playoffs every year. And just like any fast food, they were good, but they weren't great or special. And it's not somewhere you'd go on a first date. Unless you were really drunk and have zero class, let's leave my dating history out of this for now. In that decade of not great, not terrible basketball, one year stands out, 2014-15 season. Atlanta won 60 games that year, the most in franchise history, and 22 more than the previous year. They had four All-Stars, which was an NBA record. They clinched the number one seed, and Mike Budenholzer won Coach of the Year. It seemed like they were on the brink of something special in the playoffs, and they won their first two series and secured their first trip to the conference finals since 1970. But then, a cold shower. LeBron James tapped them on the shoulder and said, you're cute, but I rule this conference. Atlanta got swept by the Cavs, and slowly but surely, it all went downhill. They soon became a lottery team. 2001 Bucks The Milwaukee Bucks had five great years with Kareem in the 70s, five very good years with Sidney Moncrief in the 80s, and they were enjoying success in their last five seasons with Giannis. Everything else was Fifty Shades of Sadness. Except 2001, after the horrendous 90s, the Bucks finally managed to form a decent squad around two Hollywood actors. Ray Allen was the emerging all-star and the star of Spike Lee's He Got Game. Sam Cassell averaged 19 points, seven assists, and was the star of Steven Spielberg's E.T. Together with Glenn Big Dog Robinson, Cassell and Allen pushed the Bucks to 52 wins in the regular season and the second seed in the conference, compared to the eighth seed from the year before. They reached the conference finals against Allen Iverson and the Sixers, whose 2001 season could have also been on this list. But the Bucks lost Game 7, and the Sixers went to the finals. Milwaukee didn't even make the playoffs next year, and it would take them 17 years to win another playoff series. 2013 Knicks and Nuggets Carmelo Anthony is not a very patient man, and the New York Knicks aren't either. I could have also said that the Knicks are extremely dumb, but impatient is more politically correct. In 2011, Carmelo was a free agent, but he wanted to get to New York during the 2010 season so badly that he forced a trade mid-season, four months before his deal expired. By coming to the Knicks half a season earlier, he robbed his desired team of future draft picks and excellent role players. The Knicks agreed because they're the Knicks. So, Carmelo joined the aging knees of Amari Stoudemire and not much else. With zero depth, the Knicks lost in the first round of 2011 and 2012. On the Nuggets side of things, they used all those assets from the Knicks to make the playoffs, but they couldn't do much more and would lose in the first round. Then came 2013, where the Nuggets surprised everybody, winning 57 games, the third best mark in the West. The Knicks won 54 games and were second in the East. New York won their first playoff series in 14 years, which is still their only playoff win in this millennium. After 2013, they haven't made the playoffs for seven straight seasons. The Nuggets, after their 57-win 2013 season, didn't make the playoffs for five straight years. But thankfully, they now have Nikola Jokic, Murray, and MPJ, and are going to be a contender for years to come. And the Knicks? They have some good players, but they'll probably find a way to mess it up, as usual.